It's another swing and a miss for MSNBC. Just when you thought they couldn't think that we were any dumber. Just when you thought they couldn't be any more hypocritical. Just when you thought they could not be any more afraid of Donald Trump. Orange man bad. Rachel Maddow and MSNBC, they showed their true cowardice. Have you guys ever heard of CGTN or CCTV before? CGTN, it stands for China Global Television Network. It's one of three state-run media branches in the China Media Group. The network is responsible for delivering what the Chinese government determines is the truth. For example, 43-year-old man who was subversive to the kingdom mysteriously passes away by falling off a moose. Or anti-CCP journalist loses both hands in a mysterious kitchen accident. State-run media, it is one of the requirements of a tyrannical government. If you can control information, if you can censor the truth, you can control the population. Whether you like it or not, the mainstream media in America is very, very powerful. Even though their influence has diminished a little bit, even though a sizable portion of the population knows the mainstream media is full of shit, they do still have a lot of influence. Yesterday, I was a guest with Charlie Arnold on Outkick the Morning. Now, normally, in the past anyway, I turn down requests for interviews. I don't relish being the center of attention, not something that I'm comfortable doing, but since Outkick is one of very few media outlets that I trust, I decided I would give it a shot. This was my first time being interviewed, my first time sharing the stage with someone else. I was a bit nervous going into it, a bit nervous in the beginning, but I thought it went well. Charlie and the producers at OutKick, I thought they were great. She was very easy to converse with. They could not have made this experience any easier for me. I think the segment is supposed to air sometime today. When they send me the link to it, I'll be sure to share it with you guys so you can check it out. But anyway... Towards the end of the segment, we were talking about the election in the Iowa caucus. I said something to the effect of this campaign with Trump, it just, it feels different. Back in 2016, Trump was everywhere. He was packing arenas. He was packing mid-sized stadiums. Every time you turned on the news, Trump was on television. This time around, though, it just... It doesn't feel the same as it did in 2016. The level of excitement seems to be tempered. Trump's not dominating the headlines like he did in 2016 and maybe even 2020. Every time I open my news feed, I see countless headlines talking about Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley? Really? I mean, she's barely in the race. She finished in third in Iowa. But KC, she's polling well in New Hampshire. Who gives a shit? I've got a better chance at outweighing the Lizzo in a scale-breaking contest than Nikki Haley has at winning this nomination. Matter of fact, I almost think that Nikki Haley is running on the wrong side of the political aisle. She should be running as a Democrat, but she couldn't play the gender card on that side because they are begging for Michelle Obama. I encourage you, though, to notice this for yourself. Look at the headlines. Look at the coverage on CNN, MSNBC, and the rest of the mainstream media. You tell me who you see more coverage of, Nikki Haley or Donald Trump. The reason it feels different this time with Trump is because the media is ignoring him. I believe that his base is just as excited, if not more excited, than they were in 2016 and 2020. His support has increased drastically amongst minorities. But the media... The media is building this perception that Trump basically doesn't exist. The media is building this perception that Trump is invisible. Oftentimes, perception is the only thing that matters. Hopefully, that will not be the case here. But the media is so comfortable ignoring Trump, they are now openly admitting it. Monday night. MSNBC announced Trump as the winner in Iowa. Once the winner is announced, it's customary for cable news networks to broadcast the winner's victory speech. If this was 2016, Donald Trump's speech, it would be carried on every single network. They didn't have a problem carrying Nikki Haley's speech Monday night, the candidate who finished dead last. Well, Casey, that's just not true. Vivek Ramaswamy finished in last place. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Vivek is about to land the job that he's been campaigning for this entire campaign. 
How long have I been telling you guys that Vivek Ramaswamy was running for vice president? I think I've been saying that, what, since September, maybe October? Either way, Vivek Ramaswamy, he's no longer in the race. Which means Nikki Haley is now last place in Iowa. But during her speech of embarrassing failure, Nikki Haley said, I'm so excited, it's now a two-person race. Uh, I guess St. Nick is partially right here. There are two candidates left in this race, but they're both dudes. This is a two-man race with one of those men barely clinging to life support. Now, just to be clear, I do not want Nikki Haley to drop out. Not yet, anyway. I want her campaigning until South Carolina so we can all watch her fantasy end in her home state. Remember Jeb Bush? Jeb, Jeb. Remember that guy? He was the guy who thought he could beat Trump in Florida because he was the governor there. Yeah, that was until the people of Florida listened to the wisdom of Jesse Jackson. Now, Jesse Jackson, he was often wrong, but one of the best things he ever said was stay out of the bushes. The people of Florida listen, and the same thing is going to happen to Nikki Haley in South Carolina. But anyway, the media, they had absolutely no problem broadcasting the speech from the loser. But for some reason... Rachel Maddow outright refused to broadcast the Trumper. That's kind of strange. Trump is a proven ratings draw. Since he left the White House, CNN, they have been shoveling water hoping to save the Titanic. Ratings at MSNBC have declined since Trump handed the keys to the White House to John Biden, who proceeded to lose them. Why would Rachel Maddow refuse to broadcast Trump's speech? Luckily, she gave us the reason. Watch for yourself. Of course, there is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. It is not out of spite. It is not a decision that we relish. It is a decision that we regularly revisit. Um, and honestly, earnestly, it is not an easy decision. But there is a cost to us as a news organization of knowingly broadcasting untrue things. That is a fundamental truth of our business and who we are. And so Let me ask you something. What would the reaction be if Fox News openly admitted that they were refusing to acknowledge John Biden? How would the media react if Fox News admitted they were ignoring Kamala Harris? Well, Casey, everyone in the media ignores Cam Harris. I forgot she was vice president. Eh, well, yeah, that's true. I mean, poor Cam. She's taken up residence in Biden's basement bunker. They only allow her to appear in public when microphones aren't present. But think about it. One of the largest media companies in the country, maybe even the world, MSNBC, they are openly admitting they are essentially censoring Donald Trump, a former president. Think about how comfortable they have to be to go on national television and tell the entire country we refuse to acknowledge the orange man. That is the definition of state-run media. As a cable news network, MSNBC has one job, deliver the news. Especially, especially when you're covering a presidential election. If I wanted Rachel Maddow's opinion, I'd watch her show the one night every year she decides to show up to work. If I wanted Joy Reid's opinion... Um, well, I'd rather stick my face in the jaws of Lizzo than listen to the opinion of Joy Reid. But if, I'd, if I had a thing for weaves and watching Joy Reid got me going, I'd watch her show if I wanted her opinion. It is not Rachel Maddow's responsibility to determine whether I am mentally capable of listening to Donald Trump. And it's not all Rachel Maddow's fault. She was simply the mouthpiece. I would imagine that this directive came straight from executives at the network. I thought it was ironic, though, that the reason Rachel Maddow gave for refusing to broadcast Donald Trump was, we have a responsibility to keep you from lies. That is a fundamental truth of our business. Interesting choice of words, lies, fundamental truth. Several years ago, I seem to remember Rachel Maddow being the leading anchor in cable news, running with the story of Donald Trump and Russian collusion. That one story propelled Rachel Maddow to number one in primetime cable news. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here. Wasn't that story of Russian collusion proven to be false? 
Guess what happened to her ratings once Russian collusion was proven to be an illusion? Rachel Maddow's ratings dropped by 19%. All of a sudden, I don't want to work anymore, but I still want you to pay me millions of dollars. In exchange, I will agree to spread propaganda one night a week instead of five. Yeah, uh, as I was preparing this video, I was wondering if MSNBC had done this before. I'm sure you'll be surprised to know I'm not a consistent viewer of MSNBC. So I did some digging this morning. I wanted to find out if Donald Trump had been ignored or silenced by MSNBC before. Imagine my surprise when I found this gem from last summer, June 2023. Watch for yourself. We do not intend to carry these remarks live. Um, as we have said before in these circumstances, there is a cost to us as a news organization to knowingly broadcast untrue things. We are here to bring you the news. It hurts our ability to do that if we live broadcast what we fully expect in advance to be a litany of lies and false accusations, no matter who says them. And I do not say this with any glee. I hope it is clear that this is not a glib decision. We take our responsibilities seriously. We revisit decisions like this all the time. We make the best call that we can in real time, every time. That was some good bullshit, wasn't it? I mean, I have been exposed to a lot of potent propaganda, but that was some of the best I've ever seen. That being said, I appreciate Rachel Maddow taking the time to prepare that shit sandwich, but I politely decline. You just heard her say, it's our responsibility to deliver you the news. If that's the case, why are you going out of your way to hide the news from me? But KC, Donald Trump could be a criminal. MSNBC is not comfortable giving a platform to criminals. Oh yeah? Well, they didn't seem to have a problem giving a platform to O.J. Simpson. I seem to remember NBC News being one of the first to interview O.J. Simpson after his trial in the 90s. I also remember the mainstream media interviewing Charles Manson. The media was obsessed with John Gotti back in the 80s and 90s, so don't give me this garbage that MSNBC's not comfortable covering Donald Trump because his political enemies put him on trial. The reason the mainstream media is choosing to ignore Donald Trump, they're afraid of him. They don't want us listening to him because they're afraid that you'll agree with him. The media knows John Biden does not stand a chance. Why do you think woke states are trying to remove Donald Trump from the presidential ballot? There is no excitement around John Biden. Last night, I'm watching Fox News. They showed John Biden at some campaign event that closely resembled a funeral. There was maybe, maybe 30 people there. At one point, Johnny B. Biden is standing there looking like he has no idea where the hell he's at. There are people standing around talking. Not one person talking to John Biden. This dude's the president, and he can't convince one person person to talk to him at his own event? Like I told you guys yesterday, anytime the mainstream media is fighting this hard against someone, I always ask the same question. Why? Why are you afraid of Donald Trump? I mean, the media is begging. They are begging you to accept and support Nikki Haley, which is the reason I know she doesn't have a chance because if you're supported by the mainstream media, you're not supported by normal people. But give me your thoughts. Rachel Maddow openly admits that MSNBC is refusing to cover Donald Trump. She claims to be protecting viewers from lies when she is the matriarch of propaganda. Does the excitement level around Donald Trump, does it seem different this time around? Or is that just the media-created perception? If it's media-created perception, do you think they have enough power to make it a reality? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate each one of you guys and your continued support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.